Krakoa has fallen, all the major super teams are dead, and the only person still alive to try and claw it all back from the clutches of Mr. Sinister is none other than Storm. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Storm and the Brotherhood of Mutants issue number one, a continuation of the Sins of Sinister crossover event, and find out what happens next, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join this brand new story, we actually get to check on in with Storm during the final battle of Erika. Aurora had actually managed to escape the Quiet Council, and the Sinister Eye versions of her own friends through a combination of psychic shields put inside her mind by fellow Erico mutants and the fact that because she was outside the mutant resurrection protocols, Sinister never got the chance to tamper with her genes. Storm and all the other Mars mutants fought valiantly against Sinister's brand new Chimera mutant assault. But in the end, none of it was enough. The good guys were roundly defeated and those who weren't killed were forced to drift amongst the stars. And just to really add insult to injury to the greater galactic public at hand. The Shi'ar, the Chitari, all the major alien races that you know from the Marvel Universe refuse to actually help the mutants in need. Whether it be laziness, complacency, or anti-mutant sentiment, they basically just chopped up the destruction of Mars and Erico as a Skrull attack. As we rejoin Storm sometime later, she's still actively trying to mount a rebel resistance force against Sinister. She's also donned a costume inspired by Magneto and is even operating out of Get this, Asteroid S. Not Asteroid M, Asteroid S. Things really begin to heat up when Queen Storm is met by Destiny, who also managed to escape the destruction of Krakoa and the Quiet Council. Here's the thing, though. Storm doesn't trust Destiny anymore, and really, it makes sense. Destiny could see the future, but Irene somehow wasn't able to stop Sinister before all of this happened. If you read Immortal X-Men, you would know that Irene was actually on top of the whole Sinister threat before anyone else, yet several times throughout that series, she told Essex that we must be on the same side. So surely whatever this dark and twisted world has become, it must behoove Destiny, right? Only here's the thing, that's not Destiny at all, as John Ironblood discovers. It's actually just Mystique masquerading as her lover. Why has Mystique come here today? Well, basically to open up to Storm about everything she didn't know about Sinister's plot to change the world involving the Moira clones and essentially using her strange chronal ability to create cosmic save points for himself. After that, the plan becomes very simple. Storm and her Brotherhood of Mutants will lead an assault on Sinister's lab, destroy the Moira clones, and reset time back to before Essex changed it. This still won't necessarily mean that what came to pass won't still come to pass, but at least the good guys will actually have a fighting chance. Speaking of Aurora's Brotherhood, it's not all Omega mutants like it used to be, but still she has managed to put together the best team she could, all things considered. You got Cable, who by this point might as well be a goddamn black belt when it comes to surviving dark, horrifying, twisted mutant futures, as well as some familiar faces from the Ewing era of Sword and Red. There's Wiz Kid, Korra the Burning Heart, Lulo. The team, with Mystique's advice, make their way to Mir Island, and no, the darkly hilarious irony isn't lost on anyone that Sinister sought to hide his Moira clones on what was essentially Moira's old home. Sinister's not stupid either, the island is well defined defended by new Chimera mutants like these horrifying troglodytes who are a combination of both maggot and marrow. Meaning that not only can they grow their own bones and throw them at their opponents, but those bones are also alive and carnivorous. Uh, yes, I will take things I cannot unsee for 2,000, Alex. Getting into Sinister's lab actually proves to be the easy part. The hard thing is actually getting at the Moira clones. It seems that Sinister got really creative with his next Chimera roadblock. This this next thing doesn't even have a name, it's just a living force field made from the spliced DNA of armor and several other mutants who can create similar force fields with their powers. At first we think that Wizkid is going to use his Leet Haxor skills to break into the thing, but in the end everyone else just covers him long enough so he can teleport the lab away. Which would actually perfectly explain why at the end of the previous issue Mr. Sinister returned to his lab only to find the entire place cleared out. So yeah, wouldn't you know it, it looks like the good guys won it and only only two issues, too. Man, what a short event, but sweet in its own way, wasn't it? Oh, of course, there has to be one last-minute betrayal. As we discover, Destiny and Mystique managed to pull off a perfectly executed Kansas City shuffle, getting everyone to look at the fake Mystique, which was actually created by using Shi'ar hard light constructs, while the real Mystique actually managed to fake everyone by taking the form of Wizkid. In fact, it's implied that Mystique has been acting as Wizkid for a long time now, just to really ingratiate her 
herself to Storm. Mystique stabs Storm, the last hope for mutant kind, before teleporting away with Sinister's lab in tow. And it's left open-ended whether or not that was a killing blow on Storm or not, but why have Mystique and Destiny gone to these lengths to steal Sinister's lab? Well, the answer is actually kind of amazing. You see, when we hook up with Destiny again, she's at the World Farm, if you don't know what that place is. It's where the progenitors, basically a midpoint between the Celestials and the Creed, do their work. Also, just so happens to be the place where Destiny has shacked up with her new business partner, Orbis Stellaris, who, in case you didn't know, is actually one of the very important wayward Mr. Sinister clones, and you can tell because he just so happens to have the black spade on his forehead instead of the red diamond. Orbis is working with Destiny because he believes that this Sins of Sinister future may actually be the only way in which mutant kind can finally stop the machine AI Dominion. While Irene actually has way more understandable and sympathetic goals, you see, this dark Sins of Sinister future is the only future that she's seen wherein Mystique actually gets to live. Which again is one of those story things that makes way more sense if you've been reading Immortal X-Men, but it's also a beautiful inversion of Mystique's own story from House of X and Powers of X, wherein she moved heaven and earth to try and make sure that Destiny was resurrected. And so that was Storm and the Mutant Brotherhood issue number one, everybody, and I gotta say, I really enjoyed this issue. I was worried picking it up, because I knew it was probably gonna be referencing a lot of stuff from Sword and X-Men Red that I'm not totally up to date on, but not only was it really easy to pick up and read, not only did it do a great job continuing the Sins of Sinister story in an interesting, non-linear kind of way, but it also made me want to go back and read more of Storm's adventures in X-Men Red. Ewing manages to craft a really fun story here and also pay off several very important plot threads from a bunch of different X-Men books. I felt truly rewarded reading this one. I'd give this one a very positive 8 out of 10, and I can't wait to see how this story continues to develop across all of these different and interesting little tie-in stories we're going to get. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me, and hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.